Abnormal Psychology, an Integrative Approach, Chapter 2. The source of this information is from my summary of the Abnormal Psychology 7th Edition uh, textbook by Barlow and Duran. To begin with, a multidisciplinary integrative approach is used, whereby it includes a biological, behavioral, emotional, social, and developmental perspectives. First of all, I will talk about the diathesis stress model. This is defined as when individuals inherit tendencies to express certain traits or behaviors which are activated during stressful conditions and thus they have a vulnerability to a stress, to certain stresses. This is kind of related to the idea of epigenetics in which people have certain predispositions that are only turned on or off depending on environmental circumstances. Another important thing to know is that genetic makeup influences chemical transporters and thus certain number of neurotransmitters that go in or out of neurons are influenced by one's genetic makeup. Another thing to consider are quantitative genetics which is the sum of all the tiny effects across many genes without telling which genes are responsible for which effects. Basically it takes on like a, a polygenetic point of view but however there are too many genes in order to classify all of the total effects. So for example intelligence is polygenetic, it's very hard to determine. Molecular genetics is defined as the examination of actual structures of genes which relies on the use of DNA microarrays to identify genes that contribute to traits. The gene environment reciprocal correlation model. I stated this in a developmental psychology video in which children and the environment both influence in each other, in which the children seeks out an environment that suits their genetic predisposition. So anyway, well in the case of abnormal psychology, gene environment correlations are genetic endowments that increase the probability that individuals will experience a stressful event such as depression. It just increases the likelihood of a certain individual coming across a certain circumstance that evokes uh, stress-inducing anxiety. Inverse agonists are certain drugs that produce opposite effects to those produced by the neurotransmitter. Now I'll go through the important neurotransmitters. I already discussed the same very neurotransmitters in the biopsychology videos that I made prior, but I'll go over them again in the case of abnormal psychology. So glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that turns on many different neurons. GABA or gamma aminobutyric acid inhibits and regulates the transmission of information and action potentials. Basically it's like the opposite of glutamate because glutamate excites, GABA inhibits. It has many chemical uh, effects being fast acting and influences many areas. Anyway, serotonin or 5-HT regulates behavior, mood and thought. Low serotonin influences impulsivity, instability, aggression, suicide, etc. Noepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, stimulates alpha adrenergic and beta receptors. They regulate blood pressure and heart rate. So basically it's the opposite of adrenaline. And dopamine is a catecholamine which affects emotional regulation, reward, motor coordination, etc. Other important concepts to grasp include learned helplessness, which I covered in the Everything About Learning video, whereby when organisms encounter situations which they have no control over, people make an attribution that they have no control and thus they become depressed. In a way, you learn to believe that everything is against you and you become helpless as a result and you don't try to strive to do better or overcome your circumstances. Learned optimism is the opposite of learned helplessness. 
in which people face stress or difficulty, but nevertheless they display optimism, and this ensures better functioning. Modeling or observational learning. Individuals learn by seeing what others do in given situations. This requires symbolic integration of others' experiences and one's own judgment. So the idea of modeling was uh, pioneered by the likes of Benjura. Prepared learning is the highly evolved learning for dealing with certain situations or objects, for example, snakes. Implicit memory are when individuals act like they remember something even if they can't consciously recall it. Other important things to consider in the realm of abnormal psychology includes one's mood state. Emotions are defined as the action tendency to behave in a certain way elicited by external event, internal state and certain physiological responses. They are usually short, they usually don't last that long. I've covered emotions in plenty of videos prior, I'll cover it again. Mood is where the more persistent period of emotionality or effect. Effect is a momentary emotional tone that accompanies what we say or do. It summarizes commonalities among emotion states that characterize an individual. And then finally, equifinality is the assessing the number of potential causes for a disorder or behavior are the number of paths to a given outcome used in developmental psychopathology. So basically, equifinality is considering all the different ways that can cause a disorder, all the different pathways a disorder can come about. So like, for example, depression, it might be from the environment in which certain circumstance affects the individual. It could be from their genetics, from their genetic tendency to feel stress at that particular situation. It could be from the culture in which one's family, tradition, customs all enforce how this certain situation is pivotal or very important. And yeah. So in this video I talked about the integration approach in which the various theories are used to help explain psychological disorders. I covered things like multidimensional integrative approach the diaphysis stress model, epigenetics, the quantitative genetics, molecular genetics, gene environment, correlation model, inverse agonists. I covered neurotransmitters like glutamate, GABA, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, and also concepts like learned helplessness, learned optimism, modeling, prepared learning, implicit memory, emotions, mood, effect, and equifinality. So as in, sure it seems like all these concepts are a bit of a hodgepodge all over the place, but it is very important for psychopathologists, or rather individuals who research and study abnormal psychology to combine the different theories and see how all of these contribute to abnormality or disorders or psychological disorders in individuals. Thanks for watching.